Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be discussing how I create my fur technique for my teddy bears, and in particular, Steampunk Ted. For those of you who are not familiar with what a pattern packet is, basically what I do is include all the instructions on how to create my designs within the packets. It comes with a cover photo of the finished product, and then there's multiple pages of instructions, including all of the supplies, and then how to paint the project, including a close-up of the eyes so that you can understand exactly where to put all the little dots and dashes. And then this packet, there's a bonus. I have created a background with writing on it and have the image ready to go. All you need to do is print it on laser heavyweight paper and decoupage it onto um, like a masonite surface or you could use a wood panel or a little uh, birch panel um, that has a frame on it like I did the original project. I've also included a line drawing so that if you don't want to use this background, if you want to just have a solid background or if you want to use your own papers, you could go ahead and do that. And then I've given you instructions on how to base coat it too. And then finally, as we paint along, it's really hard to understand exactly what the fur should look like if you're looking at the finished project. Because you can see, this is this first stage, and this is a second stage. There's a big leap there, and then before you get to the final stage. So I want to make sure that you understand exactly how to get to, um, to each state, and that's included in the packet too. I've already decoupaged the uh, paper onto this is a masonite panel, and I've done a few stages on here so that I can show you each stage um, in its completion. I've also asked you to watch my video on creating good line work. Um, that goes into detail on how to create good lines because the key to creating fur is understanding how to create good line work. All of these colors have been thinned with water. I have, um, I have honey brown, cocoa, this is cocoa plus camel, and then camel by itself. And they've all been thinned with water. And so what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that these are going to pull really well. And so the first thing I do is I come over with my liner brush and I test it and because that's really how I can tell if it's a little bit thick or if it's a little bit thin. And then I make sure that each color, and I have that a puddle of each color, so that I can sit in one sitting, do the bare fur without having to keep mixing water into the paint. So create an entire puddle of each color and make sure it's nice and loose and come in and test it with your liner brush. And then you'll know that you're ready to go with the eighth inch grass comb that I'm going to be using. Now this is a Ruby Satin Filbert grass comb. What's important is that it is rounded, that is the filbert portion of it. And then it has these little individual um, hairs in it. And that's going to make it go faster. I don't care what brand of filbert comb you use, but you should have, this should be a fairly small one. This is an eighth inch and it should open up really well for you and it should be a filbert, not a flat shape because this will keep the fur looking much softer. Before I talk about how I pull the lines, I want to talk about the flow of the fur because basically whether you're painting a real animal or a stuffed animal, the fur should flow in a certain direction. So with a teddy bear, it's a little bit more uh, difficult because there's just so many different shapes within the bear. And so I wanted to just point out that when I pull the lines, I started at this little seam line here and I pulled outward here. 
here on the ear, I started over here, then I started pulling outward towards the edge of the ear. On his little uh, muzzle area, basically I went around and I started pulling this way and then I pulled that way and then I pulled that way and this way. So it's almost like a circular motion. Because if you were starting to pull this way, you couldn't pull in the same direction on this side. So it would be the exact opposite. So I'm going to begin with my grass comb brush and I'm going to use thinned honey brown and I always pull towards me. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. So I'm going to start by his eye and I'm using ever so light of a touch and you can see what nice thin lines these make. So essentially I'm pulling lines and periodically crossing over. I don't just do X's like that because it would just look unnatural. So I'll pull a few and some I might pull in, oops that went a little bit long. Some I might pull in that direction and some I might pull in this direction but overall they're coming this in this direction towards the hat and towards the ear. And again, very light pressure. If you're pulling these lines and nothing shows, you either have too much water or not enough water in your paint. Also, I want to show you, I'm going to flip this over. As I'm painting with this, and this is a little bit hard because it's nice and slick, there's no paint here. If you press down hard, this is what you're going to get. It's very important that you know how much pressure to put on here so that you get these nice, soft lines. Now, the, how long should the lines be? Well, if you make the lines really long, it's going to just look like it had, the bare fur is longer. So these are about an eighth of an inch long. So they're fairly short, very small lines. And I can truly say I'm barely touching the surface with this brush. So your paint consistency and your pressure are very, very important. Okay, so another thing I wanted to point out is you can, let me flip him around. You can see how sparingly I put in the fur. It's the beginning stage. Notice how flat that looks compared to this side. This side has um, a variety of values in it already. This one just has the very first stage, which is creating texture. Right now we're not worrying about creating form. Now I know that you're watching the video, but as you're doing this, remember you have a first stage photo that you can look at. And so um, if you're painting this in its entirety and you're at home, just keep looking at the bare fur here and look and you can see very easily what direction I pulled the fur in. Along these uh, seam lines I do like to pull straight off and then I start my little pattern. For now I'm trying to keep the fur out of the bear's eyes. Now there's that one came in a little bit heavy. I'm not too worried about that because there's going to be so many layers on top. If you're worried about it you can just take your finger and blot quickly.
Okay, so I'm my brush is starting to get um, the water in it starting to dry out, and that's why I've started getting a little bit of a heavy hand with it. So periodically you have to rinse out your brush and then reload. So then we should have a lot nicer soft line, and that's exactly what the problem was. But what's really nice, since this is the first stage, and I know I'm going to have a lot more layers over this, I um, can come in and just put in all these little lines. And if a couple get a little bit too heavy, I don't have to worry about it. I will eventually come on the outside edge, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to finish up the bear's ear. So you can see while there's like gazillions of lines, this is going to go fairly quickly because this little brush um, puts down five or six lines at a time. And because they're so short, it's almost like you're stippling with a liner brush. It's because I'm just kind of putting it down, getting multiple lines. And I know some of you would probably prefer to stipple. Um, and I don't do that with my teddy bears anymore. I just add lots of lines. I think this makes them look more natural. Okay. So again, you can see that this looks a lot more flat than this. So we're beginning to create texture, and now I want to come in with the next color. And the next color is simply cocoa by itself. I'm going to use the same brush, which is my eighth inch grass comb. And I'm going to come in in the light, in the mid-tone colors now, and I'm going to add some more lines. Pull off the edge. And you can see this is a lot brighter. I'm not going to come in to the dark areas. These need to stay in the mid-tone and lighter areas. Because now we're trying to create form. So we have to pick and choose where we're going to be placing these colors. As you come into the dark area, if you need to come in and add more lines, you're going to go into your first color. So right now this is the cocoa and this is the honey brown. This is going to be our mid-tone and light, light tones area right now. And if you need to reinforce the um, lines in the darker areas, you would use the honey brown. And that's what I'll do. So I rinsed out my brush, and now I'm going to come in and just add a few more lines. And this is just in the darker areas, making them look a little bit more fuzzy. Went a little bit too fast here, so we'll add just a few more of the cocoa here. So you can see it's just this outside area here that I went back into the honey brown. Now I'm going to be pulling the highlights on his forehead. And again, along this seam line, I like to pull it straight out so that it looks like there's a little part there from the seam. I'm just trying to make sure that this is filled in really nice, building the texture. And since this isn't going to cover our highlight and our mid-tone area, about two-thirds of the area will get it. And then I'm going to go back into my honey brown.
So I'm adding dimension and texture at the same time. So I purposely left the ear with just the first stage in there. So you can see how this is starting to look a little bit fuzzy, but is very flat. Now you can see that this is create, having a little bit more form to it. Okay, so now we're going to go on and we're going to use the mixture of cocoa plus, plus camel. And don't let this be too light. Um, if you're going to lean towards one color or the other, lean towards cocoa because uh, there's a, bit, a little bit of a jump here. In other words, I don't want it to look more like camel. So I'm going to use the same brush using ever so light of a touch. And so now I'm going to come in and cover even a smaller area. So you can really see how much more dimension now that um, that is going to have. Now if I need even more lines, I'll go into the other values. So um, I could pick up just the straight cocoa. And then go into the honey brown. Now I'm going to add the rest of the highlights to all of the areas of the, of the bear, and I'll come back before I put the final highlights in. this one ear and you can see how while well, I started creating a little bit of the fuzziness on there how you can barely see it now compared to the other areas of the bear but I also want to point out how now this is looking a little bit rough at this point what I do is I use all of my values that I have there's three values so now I'm using my liner brush and I'm going to reinforce all the areas that I just put in this is going to make it look a lot night a lot softer I am using the same type of motion where I'll pull a few one direction and then occasionally cross over. These are not X's. So 
So this is just going to soften and fill in and continue to create form. And that's why we need to make sure we only put this in the areas that are lighter. So now I'm going to switch into my mid-tone color, which was cocoa all by itself. Pull that around the eye a little bit. And now I'm going to go in my darkest color, which was honey brown. And I'll even pull a few of these in the ear. So I want you to see the difference between the side and the rest of its face. See how soft it looks? Now what really convinces the eye that this is all nice and fuzzy is I'm going to go back into my darker color and I pull lines coming on the outside edge. And again, this is with the honey brown. I would have to wait until the um, color is done, but I would also pull a few over here. Even if I were to pull lines over this flat ear that I haven't built up, it's still going to look fuzzier because I pulled some lines on the outside edge. Now I want to say that I have another color that I could go lighter, and in your instructions it calls for it, and that's camel. I don't know that I really need it because I really like the form. So that's what you'll have to do. So this is a very, very light color. This is camel all by itself. So maybe I will just put just a little bit more in here, giving it a little bit more oomph right in the middle, bringing it up. But then I would very quickly work through my values and pull a few more of the color that's next to it, which was the combination of cocoa and camel and then go through the whole value scale again. Now I have the cocoa in my brush. As I finish the bear, I do pull a few lines over his eyes too, and maybe a few this way. His eyes aren't done, but I wanted to show you that's what I do. And essentially, it, that's how I do the first. So let's look at the finished one. On this finished one, it looks so soft and um, not as harsh as this. Because what I do at the end is I come in and I add glazes over it, and that really softens it a lot. And I have a video on how to do glazing, and what that does is it adds a lot of depth. So I'm going to show that to you really quick. The first thing I do is I tell you if it gets too light to wash over it with raw sienna. And what you'll see is raw sienna is a very, and when you create a wash you add water to, your, to the paints. So what I'm doing is I'm just coming over and softening the fur. Now I want you to see what happens when you start coming in with glazes. And again remember a glaze is transparent application of color. So the texture is going to show through. But you can see how this creates depth and a little bit more softness overall to the fur. This is how the fur looks when it's completely finished. And you can see I have a lot of extra darks, there's a little bit of red tones, and these are all things that I've glazed in. As I continue to build the layers upon layer upon layer with all of these lines, it does start to look a little bit um, hard, but when you come in and you add these transparent applications of color, 
it just softens the fur and it just makes it look like it's uh, actual fur uh, fabric. I hope you understand that whether you're painting teddy bears or a different animal or bird, generally it takes many layers in acrylics to build up the texture that you're looking for. So as in this first stage, you can see that there's absolutely no form. The fur is looking rather rough. Then as we add more and more texture, it's beginning to look furrier. Once we add the, the glazes of darks and, and a few accents, it just really comes alive. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to create my bear fur, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, may painting always bring you joy. Mm -hmm.